Today, we're excited to show you our grocery delivery app. We will show you how it works step by step. First, we will show you how customers can add groceries to their cart and schedule delivery using the app. Then, we will explain how the admin approves the order, which is then packed at the store. After packing, the admin assigns the order to a delivery person, who collects it from the store. Finally, the delivery person brings the order to the customer's address and hands over the grocery order to the customer. Join us as we explore step-by-step -step working of the app. We start with the customer app. If we want to place an order, then we must log in to or sign up in the app. As a new user we can sign up directly with our social accounts like Google and Facebook. For this demo, we will log in to the app using our login credentials. So, let's log in to the customer app. This grocery app is a multi-vendor app. This feature allows us to order from different stores and categories. Let's take a look at a store called Wall Street, which specializes in bakery products like muffins, bread, and cake. This allows multiple local stores in a region to register as vendors on our grocery app and sell products directly to customers. Now, let's navigate back to the main screen to select from the categories. Here, we will proceed to place an order. Let's choose a few items to add to our cart. Let's make a healthy choice by selecting fruits and vegetables. Here, we'll find a list of products in this category. To view detailed information about a product, such as apples, simply tap anywhere on it. This will take us to a page with a detailed description, like this one for apples. Now, let's add three apples to our cart. As we add more quantities of apples, you'll notice that the price increases with each additional apple added. We're adding a few more items. Let's add one banana and then one broccoli. What can be healthier than a broccoli? Now that our order is complete, let's move to the cart. To select an address, click here. If we had previously saved addresses, we will see them listed here. If you wish to deliver the order to a new address, simply click on Add New Address here. This will open up a window where we can manually add a new address or select one using the map by clicking on Select via Map. Let's choose a new address by placing the marker over the desired location like this. The app will then update this address as the delivery address. We have the option to apply coupon codes and add tips, which can be customized according to your preference. Now, let's choose the payment method. Here, we're selecting cash on delivery. After selecting the payment method, we proceed to place the order. Upon placing the order, we receive a confirmation from the app along with an order number. We can check the status of our order by clicking on the View Detail button, which indicates that our order is yet to be accepted by the admin. Now, as an admin, we can navigate to the Orders section to review the pending orders. Here, we find the order we created and proceed to accept it. After accepting the order, the customer receives a notification confirming the order. Following this, the status of the order in the app also changes to the order accepted stage. After the admin confirms the order for a customer, we proceed to the dispatcher panel to manage the logistics of the delivery. To assign the order to a driver, navigate to the routes section. Currently, we are in the pending assignment segment. Now, we select a driver for delivery. In this case, we choose Shailesh as the driver. The driver can be automatically assigned to the task using a batch system, or we can manually assign the delivery task, as demonstrated here. As soon as the admin selects a driver, the chosen driver will receive a notification on their device, like this. Once the driver accepts the request, the delivery order will then appear in the driver's today's task section. Once the delivery process is initiated by the driver, the customer will receive a tracking update on the app. We are now in the driver app where the delivery partner will update the status according to the delivery stage. The delivery partner will press the hold to start button to indicate that they have started moving to the store. Once the delivery partner arrives at the store, they need to press the hold to arrive button. To collect the order from the store, the delivery partner will press the hold to pick button. Subsequently, they will receive an OTP, mark their signature, and take a picture of the items they are picking up for delivery. As the delivery partner travels to the customer's address, they should press the hold to start button like this. Upon reaching the customer's address, the delivery partner must press the hold to arrive button like this. When handing over the order to the customer, the delivery partner should press the hold to complete button like this. Then they will receive an OTP, mark their signature, and take a picture of the delivered order. The driver's app will then display the distance covered and the time taken by the delivery partner. A notification is sent to the delivery partner confirming the successful delivery of the order. 
The delivery partner can revisit the driver app to check for any pending pickup and delivery tasks. Here, we can see that there are no new tasks for the driver. This demonstrates the process of placing an order through our grocery app. In the back end, we illustrated how the admin accepts the order, assigns it to a delivery partner, who then delivers it to the customer. Please note that this is the basic version of our grocery app. Should you require additional specific features, we can customize and upgrade the app to meet your needs. So, that concludes the overview of both the customer app and the driver app. As specialists in app development, we've transformed startups into profitable ventures. Leveraging our advanced AI capabilities, data encryption, and blockchain architecture, we empower you to control your source code, ensuring security and innovation. With our expertise, we can create a grocery app tailored to your needs. If you're interested in creating your own grocery app, simply click on the link provided in the description. You can schedule a free consultation and demo session with us today at a time that suits you best. Our team of experts will be happy to answer any questions you may have and provide you with a personalized demo tailored to your business needs. If you're interested in observing the working of the admin panel, feel free to continue with the remaining part of this video. We will now cover the admin panel. First, we log into the admin panel using our username and password. In the admin panel you will find different sections, each of these sections designed to facilitate the smooth operation of our grocery app. We start this overview of our admin panel with its first section, Orders, which is further divided into nine subsections. The first section is our dashboard, which offers insights into our business's vital signs. Here, we monitor key metrics like customers, orders, revenue, and more, providing a snapshot of our operations to guide decision-making. Below, we will find the weekly revenue section, comparing current and previous weeks, alongside a daily graph tracking weekly sales. On the top right, a bar graph shows monthly revenue, while the bottom right displays global revenue by location. This wraps up our dashboard overview. The second subsection is orders. The orders section comprises three parts, pending orders, active orders, and order history. In pending orders, we track deliveries awaiting completion, with detailed breakdowns of each order's total, taxes, and delivery fees. Admins can accept or reject orders here. Active orders shows orders in processing, while order history archives the delivered orders. This concludes our orders overview. We now move to the third subsection, which is stores. Here, we'll find essential metrics at the top, such as total stores, open stores, total products, and total active orders. Below, you can view detailed store status which include active, awaiting approval, and blocked stores. We can also use the search feature to find specific stores quickly. The table below provides detailed information about stores. For instance, let's consider the store Whole Foodies. They offer only delivery services and have two products for sale. Currently, they have five orders, with four being active. As an admin, we also have the option to delete vendors if needed by clicking here. As the admin, we can also add new stores. In the Add Store page, there are basic details of a store followed by advanced details which our platform provides to a store, like giving the rights to add category to the store and so on. This concludes our store overview. We now move to the fourth subsection, which is accounting, which is further divided into seven subsections of its own. In the accounting section, the first subsection is orders. At the top, we can track the total value of orders, the number of orders, the cash to be collected, and total delivery fees. Admins can easily filter data by selecting specific dates and times. Detailed insights into each order include customer and vendor names, vendor earnings, subtotal amounts, makeup prices, and applicable discounts. Additionally, you can view delivery fees and commissions. We can also monitor tax details and delivery fees with the option to export comprehensive CSV and PDF reports. In the accounting section, the second subsection is loyalty cards. Our accounting section offers tailored features for loyalty card management. At the top, essential metrics like type of loyalty card applied, total loyalty card earned, and total loyalty card spent gives us a clear overview in terms of performance. We can track orders, customize analysis with date and card type filters, and export data in CSV and PDF formats. Detailed insights into each order includes order ID, date and time, customer name, final amount, loyalty card used, membership, and earned points, empowering effective program management for enhanced customer engagement and retention. In the accounting section, the third subsection is promo codes. In the promo codes dashboard, key insights are provided, 
Admin paid total shows total admin paid promo value. Vendor paid total reveals vendor paid promo total. Promo code uses indicates how often codes were applied, and unique users to use promo code highlights distinct users using codes. Below, orders are listed with order ID, date and time, customer, and vendor names, along with subtotal, promo code discounts, final amount, and payment methods, offering a comprehensive view of promo code transactions. In the accounting section, the fourth subsection is taxes. In the taxes dashboard, key metrics include type of taxes applied and total tax collected. Below, individual orders are listed with order ID, date and time, customer details, final amount, tax amount, and payment methods. This simplified layout ensures easy understanding of tax transactions, facilitating efficient accounting management. In the accounting section, the fifth subsection is stores. In the top section, we find key financial metrics, total order value, total delivery fees, and total admin commissions. A calendar feature allows date selection for personalized viewing. Below, vendors are listed with order value, delivery fees, admin commissions, and promo values. Additional insights include service fee, fixed fee, cash collected, payment gateway details, vendor earnings, and tax information, providing comprehensive financial transaction details for efficient accounting management. In the accounting section, the sixth subsection is payout requests. In the payout requests dashboard, key financial indicators include total order value, pending payout value, and completed payout value. Below, each payout request is detailed with date, vendor, requested by, amount, payout type, and actionable options, facilitating transparent and efficient management. This accessible layout aids admin in navigating payout requests with clarity and ease. In the accounting section, the last subsection is subscription discount. In the subscription discount section of the admin panel, we can control discounts with ease. Set discounts for all subscriptions, admin accounts, or specific grocery stores at the top. Choose a date range to view relevant data below. The summary table includes order number, customer, grocery store name, and various discount types. This concludes our accounting overview. We now move to the fifth section in orders, which is subscription, which is further divided into two subsections of its own. In the subscript section, the first subsection is customer. The customer subscription plan key metrics like total subscribed users and subscription percentage provide insights into plan effectiveness. Convenient options on the left allow for seamless plan management, while detailed plan information on the right includes images, descriptions, and pricing details for each tier. Plans like Platinum, Gold, Silver, and Bronze offer unique benefits, empowering customers to choose the best fit. We also have the option to create more subscription plans by clicking Add Plan button. In the Subscript section, the last subsection is Vendors. The vendor subscription plan key metrics like total subscribed vendors and subscription percentage provide insights into plan effectiveness. Directly below, the system efficiently tracks plans with plans awaiting approval. Approved and rejected categories. Plans like platinum, gold, silver, and bronze offer unique benefits, empowering vendors to choose the best fit. We also have the option to create more subscription plans by clicking Add Plan button. This concludes our subscription overview. We now move to the sixth section in orders, which is customers. At the top we have key metrics which include active user count, inactive user count, special login count. Directly below them we have the detailed customer information which consists of a unique sequence number. Next is image for visual recognition, followed by name for full identification. Then we have the user type, login type, sign up date, last login, email and phone. We now move to the seventh section in orders, which is subscription, which is further divided into two subsections of its own. In the reports section, the first subsection is product review. Here we can view product reviews. We have the detailed product review information which includes an order ID, product name, average rating, total reviews, view reviews and edit product. In the reports section, the last subsection is product performance review. In this subsection, as an admin we can customize analysis by specifying the top number of products, selecting date ranges, and evaluating specific products. The section highlights top performing products, most wishlist, and most refunded product, each offering valuable insights. Visual aids like pie graphs enhance the user-friendly nature of the report, providing dynamic snapshots of data. 
These visuals quickly interpret product performance metrics, empowering admins to make informed decisions promptly. We now move to the eighth section in orders, which is admin service area. To add a new service area, we need to click on add service area. Then we can select the service area where we want to serve. We have to click on the add service area, add area name, area description, primary language, primary currency and set the geofence area. We now move to the last section in orders, which is chat. In the chat section, there are two specialized channels, user vendor and user driver. User vendor facilitates direct communication between users and vendors for product or service inquiries, while user driver optimizes coordination for transportation or delivery services. We move to the second section of our admin panel with its first section, which is settings which is further divided into 11 subsections. The first subsection is profile, here we can customize admin's profile like we can update organization details, update light theme and dark theme logo, name, email, contact number, company address, company name, country, and time zone. Next we move to the second subsection, which is customize. Here we can select our localization in which we can update date format, time format, currency format, delivery time estimator, where we can select the distance unit either it is in kilometer or mile, distance to time multiplier. And finally confirm the language and currencies, set primary country, additional countries which are serviceable, primary language, additional languages and so on. We can also select the vendor type, we can enable mobility services if we want to offer your services various forms of delivery on a single platform like delivery, booking and self pickup. Next we can select the links, we can add our custom domain links, Android, iOS app links and social media links. We also have the option of nomenclature where we can modify multiple details and then save them. Next is the user onboarding where we can customize the authentication method. It can be email, phone, concise sign up or phone sign up. We can decide on the documents required for a vendor to join our platform. If we want to add another document click on the add document button then click add type. This can be text, image, or PDF. Then select whether it's mandatory or not. We can also add the language of the documents and save it. Similarly, we have the process for user's document registration and user place order documents. Then we move to miscellaneous where we can set our order email id for push notifications, refer and earn amounts, Google Analytics id and Facebook pixel id. Then we move to slotting and order scheduling. There are multiple options for, we can select the one we want and then save it like this way. Then we can also decide what should be the cancellation policy fees and advance booking amount for takeaways. If we want to enable them, then we can do it from here. Next we move to the third subsection, which is styling which contains, two subsections. First, is app styling. Here we can customize the font styles and we can pick the primary, secondary and tertiary colors, tab bar style, tutorial images, home page style, and home page sections. Second option is web styling. Here we can update the favicon, admin sign and image, colors and modes icons which we want to show on the website, add contact us details. With this we can also edit home page style, payment method icons, order delivery status icons, home page sections. As admin we can add sections from here like this. Next we move to the fourth subsection of settings, which is CMS which further has five subsections. The first subsection of CMS is page. Here we can update web page content for terms and conditions, vendor registration and privacy policies. If we want to update the content of these, select the category of which we want to change. We can also add meta title, type of the policy, meta keyword, meta description and content. The second subsection of CMS is email. Here we can select the subject from the list after that we can add content and publish it. The third subsection of CMS is notifications. Here we can share notifications with our users, select the subject of the notification from this list, write content and publish it. The fourth subsection of CMS is SMS. Here we can share SMS notifications with our customers. We can select the subject of the notification from this list, write content and publish it. The fifth subsection of CMS is reasons. Here we can view the return, exchange or cancellation requests along with it you can also see the status of the request made by the customer. Next we move to the fifth subsection of settings, which is catalog. Here we can view the categories of the products which we are offering to the customers. To add a new category click on the add button, add URL slug, 
parent category under which we want to add this particular category, enable toggles for visibility in menu and wishlist. Add category icon, hover icon, banner image, select language name, meta title, meta description and meta keywords and submit the details. We can add new variants to the categories from here. We can select a particular category after which we can add a new variant under a category. We can also add brands of the categories which we can edit or delete for a particular brand. To add a new one click here, upload logo, upload banner, select category, brand title and submit the details the brand will be shown here. We can also add add-on sets of the categories which we can edit or delete for a particular brand. To add a new add-on set click here, provide title and set add-on options. Next we move to the sixth subsection of settings, which is configuration. It further includes multiple subsections, let's start with the first one which is hyperlocal. By enabling hyperlocal, we can add our geofence area and the same will be shown in the admin service area. Then the vendor delivery option is where we select the type of delivery options we want to offer, it can be same day delivery, next day delivery, or hyperlocal delivery. Then select the payment options that we want to offer to our users when they purchase something, it can be cash on delivery, prepaid payment or partial payment. Next we have social login, from here we can select which social media platform we want to enable for our users to register or sign up on your platform. To make it enable you only have to click on the enable button the choice will be shown to user when they trying to register or sign up on the platform. We can configure the map, email and SMS from here. Select map, enter API key and API key for app and save the details. For SMS we can enable the status OTP to make it more authenticated for users, select service provider, API key, secret and save the details. In the mail configuration, select mail type, mail driver, host, port username, password, encryption, mail from address and save the details. Next are the Firebase notification, customer support, SOS numbers that will be shown on your web. In the CRM with which we are accessing the data for example right now we can see that there's HubSpot which is available as a CRM integration, which if needed can be enabled from here. Here to peer, delivery options add to cart button, chat button, call button enable them accordingly. We have the edit order option, if we make it enabled for users, they can edit their placed order, in the given time which we added here. Lastly in the integration section, we offer various options tailored to your needs, including Third-party accounting Square POS integration Goffrugal POS integration Store subscription rule Influencer module Notification for pickup and delivery Marg Cron scheduler Vendor notification product stock Tax jar Blockchain route formation Custom mods Next we move to the seventh subsection of settings, which is tax segment. We can easily add and view tax categories offered by clicking the add button. Simply input the title code, and description, and submit the new tax category. Similarly, we can add tax rates following the same process. Next we move to the 8th subsection of settings, which is payment options. In the payment options subsection, we can enable various payment methods. For instance, selecting cash on delivery allows us to set a minimum amount. Similarly, enabling options like PayPal, Stripe, Paystack etc. is as simple as selecting the enable option next to them. Next we move to the ninth subsection of settings, which is Manage Delivery. Under this we will find two options, Delivery Options and Delivery Slots. Under Delivery Options, we can enable the delivery service, with the Edium Dispatcher currently integrated and enabled. In Delivery Slots, we can create multiple delivery slots by clicking the Add Delivery Slot button and configuring them according to your needs. Next we move to the tenth subsection of settings, which is Manage Roles. From here, we can manage roles and permissions. To create a new role, click on the Create Role button, add the role details, and submit it. Once submitted, the new role will appear on the list on the left side. To adjust permissions for any role, simply click on the role name in the list. Then, on the right side, we can manage the permissions allocated to that role by adding or removing them as needed. Next we move to the last subsection of Settings, which is Cache Control. It includes the module Wise Cache Management which is currently enabled. We now move to the third section of the admin panel which is Marketing. Here we can manage all our marketing promotions. In Marketing, the first option is Banners. Here, we can view various banners with image, name, duration, and redirection. We can edit or delete banners as needed. To add a new banner, click Add, 
upload the image, assign a name, start and end dates, and choose a category, vendor, or URL redirect. This feature can generate additional income by charging fees or commissions for promoting vendors. The process is the same for mobile banners. The second option in marketing is promo codes. We can view details like image, code, title, description, type, amount, and expiry date. To add a new promo code, click add, upload the code image, title, description, promo type which can be fixed amount or percentage, amount, and expiry date. Set if it's for free delivery or first order, paid by whom, admin or vendor, and min or max amount. Specify limits per user and total limit, and set promo visibility which can be public or private. We can also restrict by products or vendors by selecting the type and choosing the product. Finally, submit the form. The third option in marketing is loyalty points. We can view redemption value, name, image, description, and earnings per order. To add a new card, click add, upload image, set name, minimum points, description, and earnings per order, and value of loyalty point. The third option in marketing is campaigns. Here we can view the details of the campaigns which we are running on the platform. It can be in the form of SMS, email, or push notification. For example here we have push notification type of campaigns. We can customize it according to our needs. First we have to add a title, select notification type, write the message, select users whom you want to offer the services, schedule a date, update the request user count and request time after which we can submit the details. We now move to the third section of the admin panel which is extra which is further divided into two subsections. First option in extra is tools. It includes a copy tool, copy from, copy to, tax copy tool and upload multiple files tool. This tool can be used to create the data of another vendor who is selling the same product which is already listed. Similarly this can be done for the case of tax as well. Last option in extra is DB audit logs. Here we can view the database audit logs. Here we can view the database audit logs. Here we can do audits of authentication, products, clients, users, vendors, and orders. With this, we have covered everything related to the admin panel. If you want to create a grocery app for your own business, then we at Code Brew Labs are here to help you. With over 3,000 satisfied clients worldwide, we're experts in custom software and app development. Contact us by clicking on the link given in the description. Fill up the form, with your name, your email address, your contact number and a few details about your project along with the date and time slot when you will be able to attend a call. Click Submit which will take you to the next screen where you can select your project budget and your industry, after doing that click Submit. And now your query is registered with us. This way, you can easily schedule a free consultation and a personalized demo session with us at a time that suits you. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching this video.